I'm a singer, I'm a drummer. Either of those two would do. <laughs> Welcome to the A to Z of Phil Collins. I take it to check, but I prefer the cash. <laughs> the idea behind this podcast is to take a journey through the life and music of Phil Collins. When I said yes to do the job, it was just to write the songs. But as I did the demos, they decided they couldn't see anybody else singing them. We'll talk about events like Band Aid. It was an ego free day. Pay tribute to friends like Eric Clapton and Robert Plant and tackle subjects including reunions, gorillas, and the importance of a good drum fill. So take a look at me now. Easy, easy Stories, songs, memories, each one represented by a different letter from A to Z. I always used to watch the Oscars and, you know, you wonder what it's like to be up there and then suddenly you get an opportunity. And the winner is... Everything I've done has been really a bit like jazz. This is the A to Z of Phil Collins podcast. With me, Phil Collins. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Matt Everett and I'm your host for this, the A to Z of Phil Collins, a podcast where we journey through Phil's life with each letter of the alphabet representing a different song or story from A naturally to Z. This week, me and Phil tackle I to L and we're going to touch on John Bonham playing Nebworth in the air tonight and the lamb lies down on Broadway. But let's start with the letter I. I is for I wish it would rain down. I is for image. What's people's biggest preconception of you? What's people's misconception about what you're really like? Do you know, I mean, Mr Nice Guy used to get up my nose and that was my mum's fault, you know. Some journalist rang up and said, uh, come on, Phil seems to be doing, you know, good things all the time, Princess Trust, blah, blah, blah. What's he really like? And she said, well, I'm not wanting to offend anybody, you know. She said, I, 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 don't, I can't think of anything. So I became Mr. Nice Guy, you know. And, um, you know, I kind of, there's nothing wrong with being Mr. Nice Guy, really. It's better than being an arsehole, but... <laughs> this is true. I think there was a time when the music, it used to call it BMW music, you know, like shiny, polished, professional... Um, popular. Popular and... But anyway, you know, it, it was just because, you know, it's just, you're only going to have one or two people say that and then suddenly other people start saying, everything I've done has been really a bit like jazz, you know. I mean, it's first take stuff. It's when I'm writing it, I'm improvising lyrics... As I'm singing, I write down what I've sung, try to make sense of that. You know, I'm, I'm not a perfectionist. And I think that is, that is something that's kind of rankled me, you know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a perfectionist. I mean, you know, but it's not me. Um, I just, you know, go from one thing to another. I think... The argument that I spread myself thin in the 80s is a truism. You know, I, I, I kind of, when I say that I must have annoyed a lot of people because I was omnipresent, I really do think that. Yeah, but nobody f forced anyone to buy those records. No. So no. that's the product of people wanting to hear the music. Yeah, well, couldn't, I can't argue with that either, but I, I do think that the things that were played on the radio all the time, whether it's You Can't Hurry Love or Susudio or One More Night or 
There's a lot of different kinds of stuff on the records, and uh, but you know, record companies or disc jockeys chose certain songs to to play all the time, and that eventually becomes who you are. I is also for, of course, in the air tonight. I can feel it calm in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. And I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. Oh, Lord. Can you feel it? You're listening to the A to Z of Phil Collins with me, Phil Collins. J. J is for John Bonham, the late great drummer with Led Zeppelin and something of a hero for Phil. Buddy Rich's side, that's the mix of power and groove, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah. I mean, I remember seeing John Bonham. Yeah, you saw him like like at the marquee, didn't you? Yeah, with Tim Rose. Whoa. Tim Rose was over with a with a trio, well, two other guys, you know, with Morning Dew, which was his big hit. I went to see him because I liked the song and I'd bought the album and I liked a few songs on the album. And I and I went with a good one of my best friends who's in the band now, Ronnie, um, and he had a drummer with him unlike anybody I'd ever seen, and that was Bonham. And uh, the bass player was a guy called Steve Dallin. And I was watching the, the drummer and I was listening to and uh, watching his feet. And I thought, this is incredible. I've never seen this guy, anybody do this. With the bass drum pedal. And um, I decided to just keep an eye on this guy, you know, to see what, what else he was doing. And... Uh, I didn't know anything about the Band of Joy, you know, with Robert Plant's band, but he'd been in that, I think. And then, you know, one of the other gigs I went to see was the Yardbird, New Yardbirds. I saw the Yardbirds a few times, but the New Yardbirds had Jimmy Page on bass, and then suddenly it was a different band, you know. I remember seeing them at the marquee, and, and, and Robert Plant was singing, and Jimmy Page and John, bon- uh, John Paul Jones, and the drum was John Bonham. And that night, which was their first show in the marquee particularly, but I mean, I think probably in London, it was fantastic, you know, and I became a firm believer from Tim Rose onwards all the way through this. He was a remarkable drummer. Remarkable. Jay is for jail time. You've been arrested ever? No. Honestly. (laughs) Come come close. (laughs) Come close. Oh, I got, I got, we got, we have, you know, got stopped speeding in Waco, Texas. I remember taken to the jail, county jail, but that was just to pay a fine. No, boring. Actually, I was arrested once uh, for drunk driving. You know, over the limit. Had my drums and someone else's girlfriend in the car, and. Uh, I got taken to somewhere, I don't remember where it was now, you know, and then eventually let out. You're listening to the A to Z of Phil Collins with me, Phil Collins. K. K is for Nebworth. Nebworth House is a stately home in Hertfordshire, England, and a place that Phil's played both with Genesis and solo for the Prince's Trust charity. It's an area that can hold an audience of over 100 thousand people it's a big gig you watch footage of them from the audience's perspective and it's it's always kind of it's kind of mind-blowing and then you think about what it must be like being the focal point of that many people the psychology of those gigs just must be i can't imagine what it's like having that many people and now we've been waiting for these 
five people to come and perform. But we're also looking at that one dude. That's, psychologically, that's a pretty hefty... Or don't you think about it like that? I don't know. Oh, well, you're better off not thinking about it, <laughs> uh, certainly. But I, I don't think you do. I mean, by the time you get to that, you've been through all the other stages and it's not quite... It's not like black and white, you right. know, it's a gradual thing. Trouble with somewhere like... Ned was with a, a dozen acts on is pretty overwhelming because everybody's come to see everybody. So you, you haven't got a core of fans that, that have come to see you. And uh, so sometimes that can be a little unnerving because <laughs> you're playing to people that, you know, I never did think I liked this lot. And now I'm, you know, and now I'm sure... You know, you don't know if you're going to get some of that. You're not going to get a lot of people uh, possibly that, that are really, really into it. Um, better off when you're doing your own shows in an enormous dome. You know, you've got convertees there. But to be honest, it, it doesn't really affect you. It doesn't really occur to you. You know, when I went out originally on this first little batch of shows... We did um, the Aviva Stadium in Dublin, you know, 45,000 people or something, and um, that was a little bit more alarming because you haven't been there for a long time, if at all, and you're genuinely wondering if they're going to enjoy it. We did South America, and they were all like that, all the shows like that, and the audiences were brilliant. And you kind of, you know that ahead of time that they're going to be so excited to see you because you haven't played there for... So it, it depends on the night. L. L is for Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, the 1974 Genesis album, and maybe the band's finest moment. It's really interesting how that record has just... People still love it. Mm. And people and people that you wouldn't expect to love it, love it. And very cool bands love it. And it's kind of got this thing that not a lot of records have. Mm. Well, I mean, I haven't listened to it all the way through for like 30 years, you know. Really? No. <laughs> I mean, I probably only listened to it all the way through a couple of times when it came out. Um, there's some good stuff on there, and it was recorded in a way that we had never done before. We didn't do it in a studio. You know, we wrote it in this house in Headley Grange, in Hampshire, which was where Zeppelin did a lot of their stuff. And, and uh, we uh, went to a, a farm in Wales to record it. And so we were in a barn and we were living in the house. And for the first time, I think we started to sound like we sounded, as opposed to looking at the studio clock, you know, and, and trying to get the tape before you had to leave and all that kind of stuff. It was, there was, there was, no pressure, and we didn't respond very well to pressure. You know, um, we weren't the most relaxed band in the world. I mean, I was usually relaxed. <laughs> but but Tony uh, and Mike and Pete certainly weren't relaxed, you know. I mean, they... No, not that I remember. But it's an album that has grown in status yeah. over the years. And that is something that, you know, I mean, we couldn't get arrested with it when it, when it came out. I mean, we, we went to America, played our first show on this tour that had been booked of a hundred and something shows, and it hadn't come out, and people didn't know the music, and we were playing the whole double album. I mean, it was, you know, w w give me a list of things you don't want to do, and you've, I've just, you know, like, probably named six of them. So... But, it, you know, now it's, it's highly respected and, uh, and highly revered. It's almost like having the last laugh, and it? It's like, you know, Arcade Fire, Elbow, all these bands. It's like, yeah, I told you it was good. Yeah, well, I mean, it's great people are rediscovering it, you know. It's in your eyes The love you have You can disguise That's the end of episode three from I to L in the A to Z of the life 
and music of Phil Collins. If you subscribe to the podcast, you can go back and listen to previous episodes. The series does work best if you go from A to Z. And you'll also get the next episode automatically. Then if you do that, then I shall see you then. I've been Matt Everett. Thank you very much for listening. This has been a Cup and Nuzzle production. <laughs>